Welcome to IDP Plus Trends. On this episode, we are going to discuss running backs that need to draw your attention, running backs you need to draft this year in your 2024 drafts, your fantasy football drafts. Uh, for all you that haven't checked in yet, I am Johnny Freakin' Fantasy, one of your co-hosts. I'm at on X at Johnny Freakin' F1. Uh, this is my co-host, Steve, from Average Joe's Fantasy Football. Uh, his He is on X at ABG Joe's underscore ff steve how are you tonight brother good ready to talk some uh running backs uh we had some big news earlier uh trevor lawrence got a huge contract trevor um, lawrence man living it up getting paid i just paid quarterback at this moment per year uh which is crazy I'm, I'm a fan and i like him but i think jacksonville paid a little too much but yeah i feel that well we're going to try to do on the opposite side, not not invest too much with these running backs, not pay too much, pay the premium uh, and reap the benefits of, of later round picks. So before we go ahead and dive into uh, our five running backs that we're going to recommend for you to draft this year, I wanted to mention that Trophy Smack is running a promotion right now. It's draft season, folks. Believe it or not, we're here. Get ahead of the game right now with Trophy Smack's gorgeous draft boards, complete with player stickers so deep you couldn't possibly need them all. And for the first time, Trophy Smack has an IDP expansion pack for all of us defensive nerds out there like myself and like Steve. But right now we're going to talk about offense. We're going to go right into the running backs. You can see on the screen I pulled from Fantasy Pros. This is the uh, ranking in respect to, well, ranks of the running backs. And uh, you see overall what that means is their average draft position. So we have McCaffrey, first running back off the board, number one overall. Then we got Bijan Robinson going second uh, in running backs, but seventh overall. So that right, uh, that second column is for ADP. Um, so a couple of notes about this. Steve and I talk. We're a little bit uh, shy to spend the to pay the hefty price and draft. You know these top 10, 12 guys. There is one guy that I'll recommend in that top ten, but I'll get to that in just a minute. Um, but on a, on a general scale here, general scheme and things. Um, running backs that played more than 45% of their team snaps over the last couple of years, we've seen that go up in, in 2020, there was only 37 running backs across the league to play more than 45% of snaps. Now in 2021, it stayed stagnant at 37 again, 2022 it crept up to 40. And this, this past season, 2023, we had 42 running backs playing over 45% of snaps, which is one reason why we're going to tell you to uh, stay put, get your short up uh, wide receivers, your WR1s, your twos, your tight ends, get that all taken care of because there's some diamonds uh, in the rough here when we talk about running backs. But Steve, let me kick off my number one uh, running back here going uh, with respect to ADP, and that's Derrick Henry. You see Derrick Henry there at number nine. Uh, Derrick Henry's 30 years old now. He'll be 30 uh, in 2024 and throughout the whole season. But for me, I'm not really concerned too much about the age. Uh, what I like to see with Derrick, Derrick Henry and, and drafting a running back this early uh, in general is consistency. And with Derrick Henry, you do see that. Um, he averages in his career 254 carries, almost 1,200 yards. He has almost uh, 12 touchdowns a year. Uh, in 2023, he didn't do too bad uh, last year as well. All 17 games played, 280 carries, almost 1,200 yards and 12 touchdowns. And you know what? I like the upgrades they made there uh, on the offensive line in Tennessee. Furthermore, they have new head coaching. They have new offensive coordinators. So, you know, as much as this is uh, – uh, uh, I'm sorry, this is, that was for uh, Tennessee, but – as, as far as Derrick Henry in, in in Baltimore, I think you know you you have Gus Edwards who's leaving. Um, Keith Mitchell's not going to be there for the first at least three to four weeks, and I like Mitchell a lot. But Derrick Henry here is somebody who I think is going to give uh, dependability, consistency. I, I expect him to go for at least ten to twelve touchdowns this year and and, and garner about two hundred seventy five carries, uh, 1,300 yards is not out of the realm for Derrick Henry. So. Um, I don't really like, again, drafting running backs this early, but somebody who uh, I'm not going to try to, you know, find the number one overall running back. Still, De Derrick Henry could be that guy. But I think when we're talking about top 10 backs here, Derrick Henry is, you know, looking at the average draft position, even though he's number nine, he's going at 36. This is the, you know, late third round of your 12, uh, 12 man uh, you know, drafts. So I think that's a, a pretty fair value to get Derrick Henry there in the third round. So that's my first guy. Steve, what do you uh, go for me? Yeah, Derrick Henry's a good play. 
Um, especially in that red zone, man, you got to deal with him and Lamar. So I think that's a good move. Um, as far as the running back that I have first on my list is going to be uh, James Cook. At, um, right now he's considered RB 13 in most, um, you know, ADP, you know, he's falling into the late fourth round. And I think that's actually a really good spot to grab James Cook. He finished his RB 12 last season for the Buffalo Bills. And if you really look at it, after week 11 from last season, he started to average 17 touches per game on the ground, not including his receiving aspect. So you saw that offense change. I mean, and realistically, I think, was, which is why you saw Buffalo in general feel comfortable, you know, moving on from Diggs, moving on from Gabriel Davis, re- relying on a rookie in Keon Coleman, relying on, Sha- you know, Shakir and Curtis Samuel. Um, I think they're just, this OC is all about the running game. And you saw it when they made that change last season, you saw how much of an impression that the running g- game really evolved, you know, and again, affecting players like Diggs and stuff like that. I mean, that's kind of part of that frustration of why he ended up getting uh, moved on. But, you know, James Cook doesn't have a lot of competition. You know, if you think about where he's at, as far as who who's going to take anything from him and the increased opportunities, I think is going to be huge. I think he's a great asset. I think he's somebody again, like a Derrick Henry who, can see red zone action. You've got to take it. The, the linebackers have to take account for Josh Allen, you know, doing some bootlegs, you know, you've got, you've got to play both guys, right? So you can't completely run right at the running back because Allen could pull it and run it, you know? So I think that's an advantage that James Cook has. So I think him at RB 13, I, I think his value is pretty low for where I think he's going to end up finishing this season. Yeah, I do like James Cook there too, and I we can only pick five people, so we couldn't we can't talk about everybody here, but that definitely a guy that I like too, thirteenth overall, and and you know late uh, kind of for a, a starting running back star potential out there, you're getting him in uh, almost the sixth round in, in ten or twelve man uh, draft, so really late there. I, I like James Cook a lot, and I I wish I could add him to my list, but I, I'll second that um, with that pick. So good first pick there, Steve. Um, I don't know about you, man, but I'm rolling down a little bit, um, scrolling down a little bit here, skipping all these guys. I mean, there's some great names uh, we have in between. We've got Joe Mixon. I think he could have a bounce back year. Rashad White, uh, he had a, a tremendous top five year, but he slides a little bit down and maybe rightfully so. I don't know if he can repeat that year, but I'm looking all the way down here uh, at all the way down to let's go to. 23 with Zamir White, man. Sitting here at 23, you see him uh, behind DeAndre Swift, one spot behind Najee Harris. But uh, I tell you what, I think Zamir White is a really fine pick. Now, I this is a name that I expect to be um, a little bit more heralded as we get close to uh, training camp in the regular, regular season here. I expect to see ADP climb up. But, man, I like Zamir White a lot. In his last four games uh, last year as um, the backup to Josh Jacobs when Jacobs was hurt, Zamir White, man, filled in admirably in those four games. He ended up with uh, 100 carries, 450 yards, and a touchdown. He also had 13 catches uh, for over 80 yards in those last four games. Um, Two out of those four games in the end of the season were over 110 yards. So this is not a guy who has to do a little bit of both or get a touchdown. This is a volume um, running back who also gets after it in the receiving game, too. Uh, He gets a new offensive coordinator there, Luke Getze. Um, comes from Chicago to Vegas. And one one big caveat about Luke Getze is, you know, I'm not sitting here saying that's going to, you know, turn them into Super Bowl contenders or make Zamir White the top five back. But Luke Getze, for whatever reason, uh, last two years in Chicago, Chicago was ranked number one and number two, respectively, in uh, in rushing, you know, with their running backs. Their, their uh, rush game on offense is going to get better here. Um, so I think Zamir White, you know, I, I do like Dylan Laube. It's like a late, uh, if you, especially if you're in dynasty, is like a late stash, fourth, fifth round. Um, but I'm not really hyping him up too much as far as like uh, hitting the ground running. I think that's going to be Zamir White. Dylan Labe will have to wait his turn. But Zamir White, man, I, I just love him here. I think this is a running back who is a solid RB2, gives you 20 or more carries and a, and a couple receptions each game. So, um, you know, this is uh, definitely later in the rankings here. We're going all the way down to 23 at uh, 80. 88 overall. So this is down now in the seventh, eighth round of, of uh, drafts. Very late for Zamir White. Again, I expect his ADP to climb. I don't think that's where it's going to stay. Um, but right now, if you're getting him that late, money in the bank. Steve, you're up next. 
Yeah, I mean, we're definitely talking about a lot of running backs that are kind of falling into that uh, RB, you know, dead zone that some people, you know, go after in a, in a draft strategy. Uh, the running back I have is actually going to be a little bit higher. He's RB18, uh, Aaron Jones. Look, he's falling into the mid-sixth round or so, maybe late sixth. So for me, you're getting a starting running back. And I get their health concerns. Aaron Jones has had to deal with some injuries the last you know few seasons, which you know comes with his age and just the way he plays. Um, but let's just talk some stats. So you've got a, a running back that when he's averaging 20 touches per game, and we're not even just talking, you know, re- receptions, just touching the ball on the ground. He was averaging over 15 points in fantasy. So you've got a running back that's pretty consistent. That's a it's a Really low RB1, high RB2 aspect. On top of that, there's a reason why he went to Minnesota. He is on revenge season. You know, he felt disrespected, you know, with Green Bay going after Josh Jacobs, essentially trying to go after a young, younger running back, especially with how well he's performed. He was beloved in, in Green Bay. So there's definitely some revenge season there. He is going to be a, a player that's going to be relied on. I know Tyson Chandler's, you know, Ty Chandler's been hyped up so far this offseason, and I don't deep dive too much into the mini camp stuff. There's so much going on there. Look, they're going to talk great about all their players, right? But Aaron Jones is going to have to be a feature in this offense because there's a chance Sam Darnold becomes the QB1. Even if it's not Sam Darnold, you got J.J. McCarthy. So you got a quarterback that's new to this offense. You have two great receiving um, receivers in you know Addison and Jefferson, and then obviously an injury um, later on coming back from TJ Hawkinson. So this is a really good pass offense, and I like the coaching staff. I like this. I, they're going to absolutely use Aaron. As long as he stays healthy, I think Aaron Jones is going to be a steal for most people this upcoming season. Yeah, man, I love Aaron Jones here at 18th overall, 80 uh, in the overall rankings. Again, 7th, 8th round, uh, not a high price tag to pay. And I definitely one thing I, that you said that I agree with is they sign him for a reason, you know, and, and he's fired up. He, it is definitely revenge season for Aaron Jones. So uh, I definitely expect him to if he can stay healthy, um, bounce back and be in that uh, RB high end RB two uh, RB one any given week status. So I definitely like that pick. Um, this is real late. He's somebody I didn't I didn't even realize how late he was going uh, almost RB RB 20. So really late on Aaron Jones. Love him. Um, I'm going to keep moving down the rankings here, Steve. I don't want to jump you too much, um, but I am going to back to my 20s, 30s here, and I'm going to go take a look at number 26, Zach Moss. And while Zach Moss has not even garnered a touch with uh, his new team, Cincinnati Bengals, yet, I am expecting him to be the main ball carrier. Now, a lot of people have Chase Brown on their minds and uh, Chase Brown, it's not he's not too far behind here. Let's see. I think he's down at 35. So only nine spots behind Zach Moss. But I, I think I'm I'm with the, the crowd here that Zach Moss is the higher um, back to prioritize here in this backfield. So, yeah, Chase Brown left a lot of people um, tantalized with his big play ability. But actually, Chase Brown, one thing about him is he was actually ranked in dead last in uh, short yardage, yard, yardage efficiency last year which I don't think that, uh, you know, uh, Cincinnati is going to be too comfortable giving him majority of carries when he was that bad uh, efficiently last year. So he's definitely got to earn that. Um, as far as who's better in the receiving game, you know, uh, the jury's still out, but I, I do expect Chase, to Brown, Chase Brown to be the third down back, maybe make some more damage in the uh, receiving game. But again, um, going back to the, the year Zach Moss had last year with Indi- Indianapolis, 183 touches, uh, 794 rushing yards, five touchdowns. I think he's going to get, um, you know, those, those volume games where he was capitalizing on Jonathan Taylor being out. I think that's kind of what we're going to be accustomed to. Um, of course, they throw the ball often, early and often uh, in Cincinnati. So we might have to, you know, take a take a reprised role as far as volume there. I don't think he's going to eclipse 20, 20 touches a game. But if he can get 15 to 20, I think this is a running back uh, two here with serious upside. I mean, we all... Um, you know, saw what happened last year with Zach Moss. Besides Kyron Williams, maybe one of the um, biggest surprises at the running back position last year. So I definitely like Zach Moss. And the fact that it's jaded, the situation is jaded as of like who's going to be the RB1. Um, yeah, this is not a high price tag to pay. This is 92 overall. I'm in a 10th round, 9th, 10th round of, of my 10-man leagues at this point. It's not a, you know, a big risk to take. 
and the reward I think is immense. So Zach Moss, I'm backing him uh, as a as a running back to draft. Steve, back to you. Yeah, I mean he played great last season. If you were able to pick him up, he was phenomenal. He probably helped you out in most games. Um, the next running back I'm going to have is. Uh, Someone who just completely gets disrespected, and I don't know, maybe I just don't watch enough games, um, is Najee Harris. Um, running back 22 right now, you know, again, seventh round or so in that aspect. Look, he's a running back that's had 1,000 yards every season that he's been in. They did not extend him, which I get it. Warren, Jalen Warren was there. There was some hype and excitement because Jalen Warren had that type of you know, burst and things like that. But I can just tell you, okay, from a Dallas Cowboy standpoint, as a fan who had Ezekiel Elliott and Tony Pollard. And then transitioning to just Tony Pollard, just be weary of that. Going to just Jalen Warren is not going to resolve any issues that, that, let's be honest, the Steelers have, which is their offensive line. Okay. With that struggle and quarterback play, Najee still was able to get a thousand yards. When he had touches, which, for example, the last two games of the last season, he averaged 24 points a game in fantasy. Just give him the ball. Like, I, maybe it's just me because, I, I, you know, I saw him, you know, when his rookie year came in. I know he was not highly touted, but he was like the best running back in that class. It wasn't a great class, um, but he had a lot of chances. He was a, a PPR beast. You know, I get it. Roethlisberger couldn't throw more than five yards at this point in his career. Najee took advantage of it. Najee still has that ability. He's not the most efficient guy in the, in the ground. He's a, he's a guy who has to build up those touches to start to get going. But after last year, after bi- the bye week, he averaged 13 points a game, and that was with a lot of share time with Jalen Warren. So for me, if you, if you give him the opportunity, I know Jalen Warren's going to still be in there, so just be weary of that when you're drafting him. But I think Najee is the clear-cut RB1 on this team who is going to get that Zeke treatment. He's going to get plenty of touch. He's going to get red zone opportunities and yeah he's gonna lose probably you know a good portion to warren in the passing game but i still think Najee is a strong rb2 in in this draft hey i'm backing you there man i like that pick of course i do i'm in pittsburgh uh i didn't want to pick him i'd let you um you know boast for me so thank you for picking Najee. but yeah man i i completely agree with that pick Najee looked like a, a mad dog running there this last couple games and um, yeah, I think it's a good situation. Um, not 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 really to be a Steeler fan, not having the certainty is he going to be back with us. But when we look at it, no matter where you're at uh, for this 2024 season, he's playing with a carrot dangled over him. He's going to feast. They're going to give him carries. They're going to run him to the ground. Um, you know whether he gets the contract or not. And fantasy is irrelevant. He's going to get a lot of touches this year. Najee Harris, great value here. Um, down to 22 overall, uh, 85 in the overall ranking. So I back that pick, Steve. Thanks for picking it, picking a Steeler, man. Moving on. I am sliding down to 32 overall uh, and to find uh, Tajay Spears here. And I was going to say Najee Spears, Uh, Tajay Spears uh, from the Tennessee Titans. I really like what the Tennessee Titans have done this year. Um, I'm sure you're, you could agree with that in many aspects. They added great weapons on the, uh, offense. They had Calvin Ridley come in, but I'm I'm more talking about more concerned with the offensive line here with Tajay Spears. Uh, they get, go ahead and get J.C. Latham, with, which I think was a great move. It's not a sexy pick, but it does help the team. They made great moves elsewhere um, to really that move tied everything together, I think, for the Titans. And I think it's really going to help uh, Tajay Spears. Tajay Spears, I think, is somebody who is, is being put in a box like they're a uh, you know, they're uh, um, receiving back. And while that, that is predominantly the case, Tajay Spears was efficient last year. He had 100 carries for 453 rushing yards with two touchdowns. Uh, he also had 70 targets, caught 52 of them for 385 yards. Also had, out of 100 carries, 13 of those carries were more than 10 yards. So he can definitely, um, you know, pick up some chunk yards. He's definitely not a uh, volume three or four um, yards per per tote kind of guy. This is a multifaceted guy that's a walking bomb any given uh, play that he touches the ball. He forced 26 missed tackles running the ball. He forced 27 catching the ball. 
So really, uh, explosive guy here. Um, and, and doesn't have an ACL on one knee. Uh, I'm kind of surprised to, to see this production, this juice that Spears has uh, with the cards he's given. Hey, 2024, no Derrick Henry there. He is out. Tony Pollard comes in. Um, you know, worst case scenario, I think that Tajay Spears gets a bit more carries than than he did last year, which Tajay Spears was a fine flex play, especially in PPRs last year. So I think any volume, um, any way you look at this, it, it, the situation only gets better. Uh, I don't know that it's going to be break off, breakout uh, top 15 running back. I'm not guaranteeing that. But when we're, we're talking uh, in our 30s here, who, who's the top 31, 32 backs, I think Tajay Spears definitely belongs uh, on in that list and on your team. So this is a, a strong flex play. We'll have weeks of uh, RB2 value. But I definitely think if you're rostering him, if you're drafting him, week to week you're, you're safer than you were last year with Tajay Spears. So I really like him, and and we're talking uh, RB threes now in the tier. So um, RB three, I think that's a little bit uh, modest with with Spears. I see him again RB two with uh, high RB two upside. So I, I like Spears a lot here. I'm not scared of Pollard. Steve, back to you. Yeah, um, my running back next is right after Taji. He's RB thirty three in Devin Singletary. Um, Again, we're talking the ninth, tenth round in a lot of these these aspects, and you're getting, especially in the ninth and tenth round, you're getting an RB one, um, at least for the Giants. Okay, I do expect him to kind of finish in that RB two overall performance. I think he can be that type of running back for you, and you're getting him as essentially like an RB three. Devlin Singletary is the clear cut again running back on this offense. I know there's some hype around the mini camp. We got Gray. You got I mean. I get it. Let the mini camp jargon just get through it. Go in one ear and out the other. You can obviously look into certain things, but they like Devin Singletary. He's got confidence. I love what he's talked about being a replacement to Saquon Barkley. And since week 10 last season, I know he kind of took over sort of that role from Damian Pierce for the Texans. He averaged 14 points a game. He had some big games last season. He had some big games you were kind of questionable. And I think that was just an offense kind of figuring itself out. Um, especially with their their new leader and CJ Stroud. But the biggest thing is he does have a lack of competition. Yeah, there are other running backs there. I get it. They're getting hyped up. Um, I do think you should keep Eric Gray. I think he's kind of a secret, you know, secret player to keep and stash. But for me, Singletary is going to get the opportunities. And I think he's going to get plenty of touches, plenty of receptions. Um, I think you get a nice little steal as a as a again, an RB2 in this aspect. Yeah, I like uh, Singletary here very late. Definitely could be a, a, a nice get for fantasy owners out there. I think a lot of people, myself included, are thinking, um, you know, this is a, a bad team. They're going to be down. They're going to they're gonna be thrown a lot. Uh, there's a lot of uh, negativity when we talk about the Giants as a whole. Um, but, yeah, I mean, if he can stay as the starting running back there, I mean, Eric Gray, I do like myself. I think he's a stash. I'm um, going to have to prove his, his worth. I think Devin Singletary is definitely going to be walking in this uh, situation with the keys to the crib. So I think that when you're looking for somebody who's going to get touches, somebody who had a nice year last year, uh, the pieces do add up, you know, and, and this is not somebody who's 33, 34 years old. Um, you know, I would compare him to Deontay Foreman as far as like guys who kind of seem to get in the, um, you know, forgot about and then come back and make an impact. But there are two different kind of players, but um, yeah, De Deontay Foreman's much older too, but Devin Singletary, I do like him in this role. He's no Saquon Barkley, of course. Uh, nobody thinks that we have him this low for a reason, but definitely a guy when you're when you're looking this late at running backs, who's guaranteed to get touches uh, at least for uh, a while. And who knows, the the Giants might surprise. They might actually be better than a lot of people like myself are giving them credit for. If Daniel Jones and, and company can turn things around, they have the coaching, they have a lot of things going there in New York. So. Maybe Devin Singletary can be a poor man's Saquon Barkley. I do like it. Um, moving into our last pick, we have one pick left, but I wanted to mention um, before we do that, that IDP Plus, our site right now is running a subscription promo. You can get your first month of IDP Plus premium for $1. What that means is, listen, we're not just podcasts. We're not just articles here at IDP Plus. We have an entire suite of tools and rankings for both offense and defense. Plus rookie rankings, injury trackers, snap tools, premium articles, and more. So right now, get your first month for just one dollar with the promo code MockDraft when you check out um, IDPPlus.org. 
mock draft is the promo code for your f- first month one dollar subscription okay moving on into our last guy here i am going all the way down actually we have two more guys sorry i got excited um no one more guy i got it right i am so excited about this guy i'm going all the way to the board down to 53 uh overall to find jaleel mclaughlin from denver now, Jaleel McLaughlin, another efficient back here, uh, not going to break the bank uh, as far as, as receptions. He does do better than most, but um, not a you know crazy uh, PPR dynamo, um, not somebody who's going to get 20-plus carries out of the question. But I do think that when we're talking about uh, a, a Denver Broncos team who lacks some, some star power in the receivers, who lacks some star power in their tight ends, I, you know, looking at history, Sean Payton has used his running backs uh, and his offenses as pass catchers. So Jaleel McLaughlin is definitely somebody who's catching my eye here. I think that this is another name um, similar to Spears. And uh, one of the other guys I talked about, I, I think, who was it here? That's definitely going to climb up rankings. Um, but anyhow, yeah, Jaleel McLaughlin last year, 2023, 73 touches, 410 yards, one rushing touchdown. He also had 31 catches for 160 uh, receiving yards and two touchdowns. I mentioned before, Tajay Spears, he had 13 carries over 10 yards. Jaleel McLaughlin last year had 12 carries of over 10 yards. And he only had 76 of those ca- uh, carries in general. So seven of those carries were over the, over 12 yards. Extremely efficient uh, runner, great pass catcher. Uh, like I mentioned, Peyton's offense, Sean Payton's offense uses the running backs in the past game. Uh, another thing is Javante Williams, who right now who we're penciling in is the the RB1. I, I'm not a Javante Williams fan. I know there's not uh, many out there right now. Um, but, yeah, Javante Williams was not brought in with Sean Payton. It was from former coaches. So, to me, I'm definitely not drafting Javante Williams. If I'm drafting a back here, um, taking a shot. It doesn't matter who's on, on my team. There is room absolutely for Jaleel McLaughlin because I think there's a good chance here, even though he's 167 overall, I think there's a chance that he could be a top 25 running back and in, in, in predominantly in PPR, half PPR leagues. Um, if this is a standard league, I'm probably not talking about Jaleel McLaughlin. I'm going to have to wait for it uh, and, and get lucky and uh, on the whims that I had said. But PPR and uh, half PPR. I love Jaleel McLaughlin. If there's a, a running back, a dark horse out there to lead uh, their team in, in touches uh, or usage, we should say, I think Jaleel McLaughlin's one of the top dogs in that uh, manner. And he's definitely a guy as of right now, I'm poaching in all my star, uh, startup or, or uh, redraft leagues this summer. So Steve, that is my last guy, Jaleel McLaughlin. Do you got a deep dive here? Where are you coming with this last pick? So my last guy, I got to give him some respect. I know nobody else will is uh, Ezekiel Elliott mm. um, right now. Currently RB 40. I get that. Everyone's kind of concerned and unsure what this Dallas, you know, backfield is going to look like. I know there's talks of it being a committee, which is most likely true. Um, but I think Zeke becomes the RB one again. And let's, let's just talk about Zeke in the last couple of years. So he took over after Ramadre got hurt. And in those games, after the buy, he had 14 and a half points he averaged per game. Those are numbers similar to Devin Singletary, similar to Aaron Jones. Like, he didn't do too bad. I get it. His efficiency on the ground was horrible. He was averaging two yards, three yards, three and a half. Like, he, he's not the running back of old. Where he had value, man, was it shown up in the PPR aspect. He was getting receptions after receptions in that, in that offense. Totally different offense. We go from Patriots offense to a, an offense where you know, the Dallas Cowboys didn't throw a lot to the running back um, as often as they used to in the past. This McCarthy offense is a little different. But I think with the lack of receiving options that increased, you still have CD, you've got obviously Ferguson, you've got Brandon Cooks, now we've got, you know, Tolbert and stuff. I still think Zeke is going to have value in the receiving aspect. When he played for the Cowboys before he was released, he was an RB22. So you're talking an RB2 running back at – this late of the round, you know, again, I'm not expecting Zeke to have a thousand yards. I'm not expecting Zeke to have over 50 receptions, but what I am expecting is Zeke to have touchdowns that season. He had 12 touchdowns. He is an absolute monster when it comes to the red zone. And that was something Dallas tremendously needed last season. If you watched any of those games, Tony Pollard was not the answer. He could not score. 
He just couldn't. There were games he would outstretch it, and you thought, oh, this is an easy one. And somehow he still could not score the touchdown. And that was something that was missing from this offense, and I think that is why they got him back. I think part of it is also just the fan base. I think most fans wanted him back. They didn't want to see him in another jersey. But, again, you're getting a red zone threat who's going to get you at least 10 touchdowns this season. That's a strong, again, RB2 aspect. Not a high one, a low RB2. But if I can get a low RB2 or a flex player like this sitting, and I drafted him in, what, 13th round, I'll take that all day. Yeah, I like that pick too, Steve. And and one thing you mentioned that I agree on is the the touchdown aspect, man. Good point. I mean, I know you're a big Cowboys fan, watching more than me. Um, definitely remember Zeke Elliott scoring a lot of uh, goal line, a lot of short yard touchdowns there. Don't remember Tony Pollard doing it too often. So agree with that. I think definitely somebody who can get 50, 60 rushing yards a game, maybe a touchdown. Um, this is going to be one of those guys who, if if not drafted, is going to be a waiver wire ad uh, on many of those lists. Like Devin Singletary, another pick you had. Devin Singletary last year. I know I wasn't talking about him being rosterable. Oh, week two, week three. Um, sure enough, for Houston, he was. So ended up being a nice value there. Maybe he can run it back to Singletary and Elliott. Both nice uh, back end stabs there. So once again, for all you your managers, owners out there in fantasy, there's a lot of running backs who have value. Uh, I told you at the beginning beginning of the episode, as time has gone on these last three, four years, we see more running backs who are, are playing more dominant touches, um, 45% or more. So now is the time not to really load up on running backs. It's a great uh, problem to have if you are stacked on running backs, but get your other positions. We got some great deep uh, stabs here for you, some great deep takes. Uh, pick them, pick them. Their their values down. There's really not much risk in, in the back, uh, the, the world we live in. Running backs are volatile. So um, when we talk about IDP, much similar to defensive backs, a volatile position. Get it while the getting's good. Um, don't don't invest too much, and and hopefully the uh, risk you take pays off later in these seasons. So thank you everybody for rocking with us once again. I am at Johnny Freak in F1 on Twitter. He, Steve, is at AVG Joe's underscore FF. Steve, is there anything else you'd like to say before we sign off? No, make sure you guys sign up. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. Make sure you guys sign up for that mock draft for that free, that dollar month. And uh, let's have a good, good NFL season coming up. Until then, enjoy. Thank you for watching the IDP Plus YouTube Network. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Be sure to tap the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload new content.